This is a short section of the book, and in a way it'll seem like we've come back to where we started, because the section of the book is on mass and density, and that, those were our motivating examples for when we define the multivariable Riemann integral. Um, you've got an object. Uh, since we're using multivariable calculus, we assume it's either a, an ideal two-dimensional object, so it's such a thin plate that effectively it only has two dimensions, so it's in the x, we, and put it inside the xy plane, or that, it, or that we have a solid object and, um, in, in three space, so in R3, in xyz space. Um, if you have a plane, uh, if you have a plane region, so if you have a thin metal plate, it's standard to talk about area density, which is not normal density. Um, normal density is mass per unit volume. Area density is mass per unit area. And what are we interested in? We're interested in when you've got like a thin metal plate or some solid object and the density varies throughout the object, like your object is not uniform. And um, so what do you do? Well, we talked about this when we motivated the Riemann integral, you, you chop up your, what we always do with integrals, you, you chop up your object into lots of little pieces, assume that the function that you're dealing with here, density or area density, is continuous so that, so that if you've chopped things up into little pieces, the value of the density on a little piece should be almost constant because your function's continuous and you just evaluate it at one of the points, and so it should be close to that everywhere in that little piece. You multiply times the amount of area or the amount of infant, you know, the infinitesimal amount of area there or the infinitesimal volume there, and then you get a little chunk of mass. And then the, the integral is just a continuous sum of all those infinitesimal chunks of mass, and it gives you the total mass. So that's what we, we looked at before, but let me just go ahead and write that. It's suppose suppose we have a we have a thin plate so that it effectively only has two dimensions in so and you've set up an xy coordinate system on it so we'll just say the thin plates in the xy plane and you're given area density so I'll write a little lowercase delta sub ar for area density. At each point in the region, you're given area density. This is, so area density. It's mass per area. Then, how do you calculate the total mass? Suppose we have a thin plate in the xy plane, um, say, covering a region R. R is my favorite name for a region in the XY plane. Then how do you calculate the total mass of the object? Oh, well, actually, how do you calculate a little infinitesimal piece of mass? So we typically call this an element of mass, an infinitesimal chunk of mass, element of mass. But, you know, if it makes you happier, think infinitesimal piece of mass. Um, well, you take the area density times, actually, let me leave that off. You take the area density times an infinitesimal amount of area. I raised the xy just then because, well, maybe you're in polar coordinates and you'd like to think of this as a function of r and theta. And this would be in polar coordinates, you would use r dr d theta. And then the total mass. Of course, is the continuous sum of all the little blobs of mass, so the double integral over the region R of all the little blobs of mass. So you take the double integral over R of the area density function times little chunks of area. So that's all you do. Um, what if you have a, a solid region in space? Well, um, suppose we have a solid. in R3, so XYZ space, occupying, now I won't say covering, I'll say occupying, I could have said that in two dimensions, occupying a region S. And then you have, well, now it's 
the honest to God density. This is what is meant by density when you don't qualify it, like with area. It's the density, it's the mass per unit volume. And then, okay, what's, what's an element of mass? What's an infinitesimal chunk of mass then? Well, it's the density times an infinitesimal chunk of volume. And then, how do you get the total mass? You add up all, the, all of the infinitesimal little blobs of mass, which is what the triple integral gives you. And so you cal calculate the triple integral over the solid region S of delta dV. And that's all there is to it. It's not a particularly deep application of integration. I just want to do three examples and then that'll be enough. So let's look at one example. Let's do one area density into normal densities. Example, suppose you have uh, a triangular plate, an ideal two-dimensional plate, um, sitting in the xy plane, and it has vertices 1, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 1. So we have a thin metal plate sitting here, and the area density function that I want is let's suppose that the area density, ah, so I want all my distances, so the x and y coordinates, so I'll just write that, x and y in feet, so we're gonna be in the English system, x and y in feet, which means density, and I, I wanted to mention this anyway, so area density, we're going to assume it's uh, one plus two x plus four y, at each point in this region. And the units, well, <laughs> nobody really likes um, mass units in the English system. Um, the name's kind of unattractive and people forget it, but it's slugs. Uh, slug, slugs per square foot. So our answer will come out in slugs. Um, you will hear some people use a pound mass. Uh, I'm not sure why. Slugs bear the same relation to pounds that kilograms bear to newtons, and so I don't, anyway, I'm, I won't use pound mass, I'll just use slugs. So what's the total mass? Well, the, the mass, this is a relatively easy problem. If you call this region in the xy plane r, we take the double integral over r of 1 plus 2x plus 4y dy dx dx dy, it doesn't really matter. I'll use dy dx, and we need to know the limits of integration to evaluate this as an iterated integral. So, well, this line is x plus y equals 1. I've already put y, dy on the inside, so I'll want y in terms of x. It means y is 1 minus x. And so this double integral is 1 plus 2x plus 4y dy dx. And the iterated integral you need um, for each x coordinate, your x coordinates will go from 0 to 1. So you're, and for each x coordinate between 0 and 1, your y coordinates start at 0 and go up to the line. For each x coordinate between 0 and 1, your y coordinates start down here at y equals 0 and go up to y equals 1 minus x. And so this is the iterated integral that we need to do. It's, not, it's easy, it's not particularly nice looking, but it's certainly not difficult. You get the integral from zero to one. We integrate with respect to y first, we get y plus two xy plus four times y squared over two, or what's the same thing, two y squared. You evaluate as y goes from zero to one minus x. And then you still need to integrate with respect to x after that. So you put in uh, y equals 1 minus x. So you put in, y, uh, put in y equals 1 minus x, subtract what you get when y is 0. So you get the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x plus 2x times 1 minus x 
plus 2 times 1 minus x squared dx. Um, you could multiply all that out, or certainly we can factor out a 1 minus x and see if it collapses to something nicer quickly. It's not like this is a difficult problem at this point, but I, I would like to finish. So let's do it. So we have, I need to write the integral again, the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x plus 2x times 1 minus x. plus 2 times 1 minus x squared dx. I guess I will factor out a 1 minus x and we'll see if it gets any nicer. Factor out a 1 minus x, so doing this, you get a 1 plus 2x, and now I've, so 1 plus 2x, I factor out one of those 1 minus x's, so I get a plus 2 minus 2x. So yeah, that was kind of nice because this 2x cancels this minus 2x. There's 1 plus 2, so that's 3. And so we just get the integral from 0 to 1. I pulled out the 3 of 1 minus x dx. Yeah, that was pretty nice. You get 3 times x minus x squared over 2. Evaluated from 0 to 1. When you put in 0, you get 0. So we don't have to subtract anything, and you get 1 minus a half at 1, well that's a half, so we end up with 3 halves. 3 halves what? <laughs> 3 halves of slugs. So that's the mass of that thin plate. All right, yeah, as I said, you know, it's uh, area density problems or density problems, mass problems are not particularly difficult. In fact, you could have, uh, I mean, they're as difficult as any other integral. You could get anything for one of these integrals. Essentially, the only requirement is that your density function or area density function is positive or at least non-negative. Maybe you'd be happy with zero density somewhere, but you don't want negative. <coughs> Aside from that, these integrals could look like most anything. All right, let's look at another example. I would like to look at, so now I want to do two the mass of two solid regions, so we have ordinary density, mass per volume. So let's, let's take, I'm going to draw the x, y, and z coordinates in kind of a different place than we usually do, because I'm going to take the solid region, so let S be the solid region under the graph of I want z equals y above the xy plane. Oh, and a, let's say and above the region in the xy plane. above a rectangle, so I want x between 0 and 2, and y between 0 and 1. And this time, <laughs> we use the metric system, x, y, and z in meters. And so we assume we have a solid object occupying that region in space, and that it has some density function um, I'm going to pick the density, or I did pick the density function, delta is e to the z plus xy kilograms per cubic meter. Um, what does this solid region look like? It's just a wedge. The, the plane where z equals y would roughly, actually let's use a different color, would roughly, I'll go up like this, 
And then we're looking at, we've got a rectangle. It goes out to x equals 2. My scales will not be the same. It goes out to x equals 2 in that direction. goes out to, <laughs> as I said, my scales won't be the same because I want to try to show you this in a perspective. So it's this, it's this solid wedge and under this plane, uh, something very Escher-y happened there. That is not, what am I doing? Uh, let's try, yes. All right, let's try something that looks more like, yes, that was interesting. I kind of liked it. All right, so this line, yeah, maybe I drew this going up too far. Because this should lie above that. Roughly. Yeah, now that looks terrible. All right, let's go with... <laughs> okay, it's not funny anymore. All right, let's go with that. So we're going out to... to one on the y-axis. All right, that looks better. Phew. All right, so it's this wedge that lies under the plane where z equals y. Lies under the plane where z equals y above the rectangle where, y, um, where x goes from 0 to 2 and y goes from 0 to 1. Right, so it, it's not really important that we draw it well, thank God. <laughs> but... <laughs> It looks vaguely like that. All right. And what do you do? You take the triple integral. The mass is the triple integral over S of the density times dV. And there's no, you know, this, this is just your standard integration problem at this point. We'll, we need to take the triple integral over this solid region of e to the z plus xy. I'll put dz on the inside and dy and then dx. It's to set us up for an iterated integral. Your z coordinate starts at 0 and goes up to the z coordinate on the line. So your z coordinate goes from 0 to y. Your y coordinate goes from 0 to 1. And your x coordinate goes from 0 to 2. And so this is the triple, the iterated integral that we need to do to evaluate the mass, which will come out in kilograms. And you just do this. It's not particularly difficult. I don't think I need any of this, so maybe I can fit the answer right here. All right, so you do the inside integral. You get the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to 1. When you integrate with respect to z, you get e to the z plus xyz. You evaluate as z goes from 0 to y. And then we still need to integrate with respect to y and with respect to x. So we get the integral from 0 to 2 the integral from 0 to 1 of when you put in z equals y, you get e to the y plus um, xy squared minus what you get when z is 0. Uh, when z is 0, this is 0, but that's not. You get e to the z, that's 1, so you get minus 1, and then dy dx. And this equals the integral from 0 to 2. Uh, if you integrate with respect to y, you get e to, e to the y plus xy cubed over 3 minus y. Evaluated as y goes from 0 to 1. And you still have to integrate with respect to x. You get the integral from 0 to 2. When you put in, oh, that was y equals. I, I like to write exactly. When, there more than, when there's more than one variable lying around, I like to have my 
be clear about what I'm plugging in for what. Um, you plug in y equals 1, you get e to the 1, so just e mm, plus x over 3 um, minus 1. And then minus what you get at 0, and at 0, this is 0 and that's 0, but that's 1 again, so minus another 1 dx. So we get the integral from 0 to 2 of, well, the constants, there's an e minus 2, and then there's plus an x over 3 dx. And for the sake of not going to another board, I'm just going to erase something up here. Maybe I'll just go way up here. We don't need my great picture anymore that I worked so hard on. <laughs> we get the mass equals... When you integrate this, the, you get e minus 2 times x plus x squared over 3. Uh, no, x squared over 6. All right, you get x squared over 2, but then divided by 3, x squared over 6. Evaluate it as x goes from 0 to 2. At 0, you get 0, so we get 2 e minus 2 plus 4 6, so it's the same thing, 2 thirds, and that's kilograms. You could simplify this, uh, or you could get a decimal approximation to it. The decimal approximation that you get should be approximately 2.10 kilograms. All right, so, you know, that's a relatively easy example. Well, I mean, all of these I've said it twice now, I'll say it a third time. You know, density, integrating density to get mass is as hard as any integration problem. You can make them look like almost anything. All right, let's do one more example that's slightly more interesting and more complicated, kind of a word problem that's not just, oh, it's, here's an object, here's its density. I'm kind of thinking of the mass of a planet, maybe not Earth, but maybe, of some planet where, you know, you think, oh, okay, it's spherical, so technically, since we're looking at the inside, it's a ball, not a sphere. The sphere is just the outside. Um, and the you know, pressure from stuff on the top compresses stuff on the bottom, and, and so the sphere is more dense near the center. So, Let's take, let's suppose, <coughs> excuse me, suppose we have this ball, so, you know, a sphere, the inside of a sphere of radius r, but we assume that the density out here, the density out here, did I call the outer density a? The density at the edge of the ball is a, which of course is greater than zero, but at the center of the ball, We'll assume the density is b greater than 0. And really, I'm thinking about the case where b is greater than a, but we're going to derive this, we're going to do this when, when you know, b could be less than a. It would be a little strange. But, um, b could be less than a. Um, and then we want that to specify the density everywhere, so then I'm going to say the density varies linearly. with the distance d from the center. And our question, find the mass of the ball. Of course, of course, Capital A, capital B, and R will be in the answer. Um, all right. So, how do you do this? Well, first of all, you need to write down what the density function is. Linearly means it's some constant times distance D from the center. Now, I called the distance D just to kind of disguise how we're going to do this, but it's not much of a disguise. <laughs> you want this problem, 
I, don't, I hope it's obvious. This problem sets up most nicely in spherical coordinates. And in spherical coordinates, if we go ahead and call the center, put the center of the ball at the origin, um, then distance d from the center, well, that's what we call rho in spherical coordinates. And then the fact that the density varies linearly with distance from the center means that the density is k times rho plus some constant, which I'll call b. Right? That's what it means to vary linearly, that it, you know, it's a linear function, uh, affine linear, if you're thinking about linear algebra terms. But this is usually called a linear function. All right, so that's what we're told, but we would like to know K and B in terms of this capital A and capital B. And you can figure that out, because this is a function, this density is a function of rho. Right? We're saying that the density depends on distance from the center, so it's a function of rho. And what we're told is that when your distance from the center is R, the radius of the ball, you're told that the density is A. And you're also told that when your distance from the center is zero, when you're at the center of the ball, the density is B. Oh, units here, any, anything. You know, if you want to pick units, you could just go ahead and go with kilograms per, per cubic meter for the density, and then we'll come out, our answer will be in kilograms. But we can do this without any units, and you know, if you pick units here, you get mass units, depending on how you pick the units here. All right. So, um, what does this tell us? It says delta of zero is b. Well, delta of zero is k times zero plus little b. Oh, that means that this little b is also capital B. So, the density function, there's a b right here. On the other hand, we know delta of r equals a. Well, that means that a is delta of r, but delta of r should be k times r, you put in r for rho, plus b, which means that this slope, this k, I didn't want to call it m because we're looking for mass and it would be bad to call this m, um, it means that k equals a minus b divided by r. So that's what the slope is, that's what this k is, and so our density function in terms of a, b, and r is a minus b over r times distance from the center plus b. Having written that, because it's a lot easier to just write k everywhere, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll use capital B, but I'll just keep calling a minus b over r k until the end. We're going to remember that k is a minus b over r, just because it's a lot simpler to write k throughout. All right, but we know our density function, and now, What's the mass? Okay, well, you know, it's not like it's a mystery. The mass is the triple integral over our ball, which I didn't call anything, but call it S, like I usually call solid regions of delta dv, but we're doing everything in spherical coordinates. So you'll have the triple integral of, we get k times rho plus b, and we're keeping in mind that we know what k is. Um, actually, let me write an element of area first. Um, I haven't done this, but infinitesimal chunk of mass is the density times an infinitesimal chunk of volume. And what, what we got for the density, or what we have for the density, is k times rho plus b dv. And this will split up into two pieces that we care about. There's the k rho dv, and because it has an extra rho in it, it's going to give us something interesting in the integral, plus b dv but this is just a constant times dv, so this part will be easier to integrate. So let me write that this is, you add up, so a little blob of mass is the density times a little blob of volume, and that breaks up like this, and then the total mass, you add up all the infinitesimal pieces of 
mass, but this naturally splits up into this piece plus this piece. But this piece you don't need to do an integral for. You can just pull the B out. It's a constant. Then you have the triple integral over the solid region of dV. So you add up all the little chunks of volume as you vary over the whole solid. Well, that means you get the volume of the solid. It's a sphere of radius r. We know the answer is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we don't have to do a separate integral for this one. It's not like it would be difficult. But in k is a constant, we can pull that all the way out. We need a triple integral over s of rho dv. And then we add to that, just pull the b all the way out, b times, and then the volume of a sphere, uh, inside a sphere of radius r, 4 thirds pi r cubed. But we still have to do this integral right here, this triple integral. But spherical coordinates are set up to integrate over the insides of spheres really easily. So over balls, the dv is, you should remember, in spherical coordinates, rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Then we still have to, we have to keep remembering Here's this b times 4 pi over 3 r cubed. What are our limits of integration? Rho goes from 0 to r. Phi goes from 0 to pi. And we need the whole ball. So your radius goes from the inside to the outside. Your phi goes all the way from straight up on the positive z-axis all the way down to pi. Your theta goes all the way around, 0 to 2 pi. All right. I'm going to do this integral on the other board and then come back and put the final answer over here. But this is not difficult. How would you know to do this in spherical coordinates? Well, it just, you're integrating over the inside of a sphere. Your density function is given to you in terms of distance from the origin. Spherical coordinates should occur to you fairly quickly in this problem. So I don't need to carry around the K, but I hope I remember to put it back in in a minute. Ah, but I raised what we found for K. What we found for K was that it was A minus B over R. So let me record that over there. Um, okay, so we get, we need to integrate do the triple integral from 0 to 2 pi, or the iterated integral from 0 to 2 pi, from 0 to pi, from 0 to r, of rho cubed sine phi d rho d phi d theta. You get a, you do the inside integral, you get a, a rho to the fourth over 4. rho to the fourth over four sine phi, and you're evaluating as rho goes from zero to r, and then you're integrating with respect to phi and with respect to theta. You get the integral from zero to two pi, the integral from zero to pi of r to the fourth over four, r to the fourth over four, sine phi, and then minus what you get when rho is zero, but that's zero, so you get this. R to the fourth over four is a constant. You can pull that all the way out. The integral of sine phi is minus cosine phi. So you get R to the fourth over four. The integral from zero to two pi. You get a minus cosine of phi. Evaluated as phi goes from zero to pi. And then you still have to integrate with respect to theta. When you plug in pi, cosine of pi is minus 1. You get minus minus 1. And then what you get at 0 is you get, you subtract what you get at 0, which is minus minus 1. So you, sub, I'm sorry, you subtract minus 1. So you get 2. So that's 2. And then you get another, the integral of theta from 0 to 2 pi, you pick up another 2 pi. So you get 4 pi for that. So all that cancels, and you're left with, and I'm saying this comes out to be 2, and then you get another 2 pi, you get 4 pi, the 4s cancel. You get pi r to the 4th, which is pretty nice. 
Um, but it's multiplied times k. So what are we getting? We're getting k, which is, now I'll put back in that k is a minus b over r times pi r to the fourth plus 4b pi over 3r cubed. Um, you get r to the fourth divided by r. That's an r cubed. Good. So we're getting 7 times r cubed. There's a pi both places. So you can factor out the pi and the r cubed. We're getting a minus b plus 4 4 thirds b times, uh, times pi times r cubed. Or, you know, if you want to write this, this is minus 3 thirds. So this is a plus b over 3 times pi times r cubed. Mass units, so if we were in kilograms and meters. Kilograms. Can we check this answer? You know, this is what we're getting. Oh, oh, okay, fine. Is it easy to check that, you know, do some kind of test to make sure we got the answer right? Well, yeah, kind of, because we had we had a ball, and the density here was B, and the density at the surface was A. Suppose A equal, and then it varied linearly. Well, if A equals B, then the density would be constant. If A were to equal B, then K is zero, and the density is constantly this common value, A equals B, so we just call it the density. But if the density is constant, <laughs> how do you get the mass of an of an object of constant density. Well, you take the density and you multiply it times the volume. That's all you do if the mass is, if the density is constant, you take that constant density, multiply it times the volume, and you get the mass. So, yeah, if both A and B are the same, and we'll just call it the density, we'd get that. So that's what we would get. But that's four-thirds, and this is three-thirds plus one-third, so that's delta times four-thirds well, good, because four thirds pi because four thirds pi r cubed is the volume inside that sphere, the volume of the ball, and then you multiply times the common density. So yes, our answer, our general answer, collapses to the right thing for constant density, which is a nice, you know, it's a nice thing to um, to check, just as a check on whether you got it right, and also, you know, it's just kind of cool to know. Oh yeah, you got this. You have this general formula that collapses to the easy thing when A equals B. Okay, well, those are all the examples I want to do on mass and density. Um, the next section is a little more, you have to have this section under your belt before you can handle the next section, which is on centers of mass and moments of inertia. And yeah, you need to be, you need to be good with little blobs of mass, the dm, the element of mass, before you go on and do more complicated things like we will in the next section.